This is the Tsin Han pathway near the town of Ping Lu, two hours from Chengdu. Part of the ancient Silk Road, a complex web of trails that stretched from China through Eurasia and onto places like Rome and beyond. This path was one of many that traders used to travel west to South Asia or northwest to Central Asia and from there to Europe, exchanging silk, porcelain and tea for spices and exotic fruits. Wow, I do feel like I'm reliving a part of history now. With such narrow trackways, you can really see why they could only transport small portable goods. And it's so dangerous. Some believe that these walls were actually built to stop thieves attacking you. It must have been really nerve-wracking knowing somebody could rob you down the road and take away all the precious cargoes that you spent months dragging down the road. And that wasn't all of it. You had these trackways going through mountain pathways. You could fall to your death. They went through deserts and all in the pursuit of luxury items. About one kilometre away from the pathway lies the ancient town of Ping Lu. 2,000 years ago, it was a market town where goods came and went, and where traders could stop to replenish their supplies and exchange advice on the dangers ahead. The way the ancient Silk Road worked is that no single trader ever did the entire route. So they would go away a little bit and they'd stop and then exchange goods. And that's quite like how the modern railway system works. That's quite an efficient way to get things around, but a complicated process too. Mm. It takes a lot of time to set up, but that's what traders are prepared to do to cater for people's desires. But there was something in Chengdu that, regardless of its remoteness, traders were willing to risk life and limb to get. Something as valuable as gold. Shoe brocade. One of the oldest known embroidery styles in China. It was introduced to Central Asia and Rome about 2,000 years ago through the Silk Road and became hugely popular. In this museum, replicas of original pieces excavated from sites on the overland trade route allow us a glimpse of an ancient past. What's particularly wonderful about this is that it's evidence of the Chinese changing their artistic traditions. For many centuries before trade opened up through the Silk Road, the Chinese just depicted fantasy animals, but here they're depicting animals from the real world. So we've got an elephant here with some Arabic writing, and it's such a clear example of ideas and goods moving up and down the Silk Road. Ker Bin is a master weaver with 32 years of experience making shoe brocade. Chou Yuan and I want to find out why it was worth so much 2,000 years ago. Weaving on this 300-year-old loom is the final stage of making shoe brocade. To operate it skillfully takes at least 10 years of training. Even the most experienced can only weave about six centimeters of shoe brocade in a day. This is amazing. Like, he knows exactly how to pick out the right amount of threads, and that kind of controls the pattern there. Unbelievably complicated. It's almost impossible to describe what's going on here, but I'm going to have a go. It's a cross between a pipe organ, he controls it with his feet, an ironing board, a typewriter, a fishing net, and a sailing ship. And these guys are the puppet masters. To get a sense of just how difficult it is to make shoe brocade, Master Her has decided to give us a lesson. Mm -hmm. 
，拉过来，然后这个拉过来以后，用这个用这个梭子，然后把它打紧，对。次做还是不错的哈，做的很平整，你看，对。I was asking, what if I want to make a little kitten or a little puppy on this? He was telling you that's going to take you three years. Three years. Yeah. <laughs> In many ways, a beautiful piece of shoe brocade is like a luxury car. Both take an immense amount of time and very expensive materials to make. Hence, the hefty price tag. Right up until the late Qing dynasty, shoe brocade remained in demand. And Chengdu still had 10,000 looms producing brocades. But by the turn of the 20th century, the art form had gone out of fashion. <laughs> 